Today we're spending the morning at the Cranbrook Institute of Science. Some nice little statues out front. replica of a big huge dinosaur and then we have a dinosaur right up there large bird displays very cool it's a very large museum so you can see the T-Rex when you first walk in. It's quite large with huge feet. Some of the exhibits here are behind glass and that's kind of hard to photograph, but you get the idea. Cool exhibits. There you go. Take a look. Is that a dinosaur or a bird? The fact that they're dinosaurs and birds probably made them very mean. This actually looks like a pelican with that long beak. And there are uh, some hands-on exhibits. This shows you how the Earth rotates around the sun. And then it'll tell you, like here, that's December. It shows you what the seasons look like. And you'll notice that the Earth slowly rotates. Interesting that kids found mastodon bones in Pontiac, Michigan. Again, they're behind a glass case, so it's a little difficult to see, but you get the idea of how huge these bones are.
the American Macedon. You're right. Looks just like an elephant to me. There's a display here. You can take a look at this of how, as they say, the first Michigan settlers, the Paleo Indians, hunted. And here's some spears that they had. And then there is an entire wall of arrowheads. All different shapes, sizes, made out of different stones. One very large grizzly bear. This is a survivor of the Ice Age, as is the Arctic wolf. That is a mountain goat, a musk ox, and a cougar. And then the North American black bear, which is literally about maybe half the size of the grizzly bear. And here's another cougar. This one doesn't look so friendly. This one looks friendly. And then you got a big moose. Well, half of a moose. This is your world famous blobfish. And your anglerfish. I don't know what This is a, a life in layers. This entire exhibit. A lot of different fish. And here's a case of beetles. But none of the beetles that I know. I don't see John, Paul, George, or Ringo in there. In a case of beautiful butterflies. And more butterflies on the other side. Very colorful. Some moths at the bottom. Oh, that one's very pretty. More cases of skeletons. There's a skeleton of a snake. A lot to see, a lot to read, and it's a very beautiful museum all the way through. And more beetles.
Up at the top, there's a rainbow trout. To the left, a walleye. To the right, a Chinook salmon. There's the Asian carp. Over here is the large mouth bass and a salmon. Hello there, it's me, Meg. So nice to see you today. Welcome to our exhibit, The Story of Us. As you will soon see, it's a great story. It's about us, all of us, you, me, everybody, about how we live, what we believe, how we survive, how we get along or sometimes don't get along with one another. Our story begins at the very earliest glimmers of human history, many tens of thousands of years ago. More chapters continue to be written today and will be added on into the far future. As you go through the exhibit, you will see wondrous objects from the Institute's collections. You will also see large books like this one that will help your visit be a rewarding and special one. I hope you will listen, look, think, and use your imagination. Find the good times in our story, but also try to learn from the suffering that is a part of our story as well. Discover the many threads that run through all of us which tie us all together as people and make up our story. So enough said for now, on your way and join me inside our story, the story of us. We lived off the sea, we gathered from the land. Here's one of the books but in that some they parts talk of about. The world, about 12,000 years ago, we began to raise crops and domesticate animals to improve our lives, which eventually led to the supermarkets we use here every day. The objects around you all relate to our need for food. And then a display of various utensils that were made by hand, obviously, for the preparation of food. Early bowls, spoons. Look at this beautiful ornate chair. Some uh, beautiful art carvings. In different tools, including a bark canoe. Chopping saws. And a beautiful headpiece from Native Americans. For thousands of years, the American Indians of the Great Lakes region crafted objects in elegant form and deep meaning. Interesting that they say that some people thought that Native Americans didn't exist. It just shows you Native Americans in various positions today. And there's a couple cabinets of artwork and fossils from the Cranbrook collection. And 
of course, Michigan insects. Way too many to mention. But if you come here, there each one is numbered and on the uh, board that we just passed by tells you what each one is. So you'll know in the future exactly what's bugging you. This is part of the motion gallery. found a train track in here. Who doesn't love a train? Let's figure out where this train track goes. Oop, I see a train. If only I knew how to start the train. ball works but I can't figure out how to get the train to work. Eventually that ball is going to get lifted back up. Eventually that ball is going to get lifted back up. Eventually the ball will be lifted back up. Eventually the ball will be lifted back up. Oh right on cue. I want you to name this tune. Oh, wait, we gotta do a little spinning thing first. Now. Oh, it's right on cue, it gets lifted back up. If only I need how to get the train to go. All right, so here's one of these puzzles. Are these images moving? It says no, but if you stare at them long enough or use your peripheral vision, the images will appear as if they're moving. Scientists think that these optical illusions are created due to the way your brain interprets the images. Your eyes imprint the image one way and your brain decodes it another way. These illusions are known as peripheral drift. So we'll see if it works when you put them on camera. And if that one's already working for you, try this one. So leave a message down below if it worked for you. And leave a message if you figured out that tune yet. 
If you can name that tune, put it in the comments below. All right, so there is the tune. And leave it to my seven-year-old granddaughter to figure out how to do it. Push the button. And there is the train. Who doesn't love a train? train followers, if you can tell me what D and RGW means, put it in the comments. And there's a section on rocks and fossils, and some information on Michigan's state rock. It says it's a clue to a tropical past, and the state rock is the beautiful Petoskey Stone. Fossils. This shows you how continents can split apart. And some Michigan copper. Quite a bit to learn about rocks. All about minerals here. And how about some information? Again, on the Detroit salt mine. Very huge chunk of salt. It shows you more about the salt. Good for your French fries. Yeah, it tells you minerals form naturally. Exhibit and how they look when they're being formed. My own personal fun fact this was the uh, doorway that we walked past. Those are the uh, statues there and the fountain. This used to be the front entrance, as I recall, because this is where the planetarium is. It's not uh, operating today. They said they have to get some parts. So. But this used to be right in the main lobby. And so this museum has changed thousandfold since I've been here before. And it's absolutely amazing and very well done. And there's an entire room of cabinets for mineral studies. Another one of those museums that you could spend hours in and not cover it all. Anywhere you look in this room, the cabinets of minerals, it's just hard to believe there's that many minerals. Over here are Michigan minerals. A little plug for my home state there. There's copper, calcite. That's some silver. 
lot of copper. And even more copper. Some gypsum. And wouldn't you know it? More copper. Some sulfur from Michigan. Some quartz. Copper. It says Marquette County, Michigan. That's gold. That does not look gold to me. Oh, hang on. Here's some copper. And in case you didn't see enough, more copper. And if you're here for a long period of time, there is the Reflections Cafe. Small little dining area. Anything we can do to save the earth, don't touch the big globe. And it is one very huge globe. All right, so we came down the big steps for the fossil exhibit. This is at the bottom of the steps. He's greeting you here. Just so you know who he is. Nice to meet you. Yeah, another full exhibit of displays. All about fossils. All right, I don't know how to pronounce his name, but Julian here discovered a trilobite fossil during the Cranbrook Institute of Science Fossil Lake in Alpena, Michigan, June 10th, 2023. Here's your fossil collecting tools. Final preparation tools. And the display cases are different. This is the trilobites of the Czech Republic. And this is the world record trilobite. It is huge. Wherever you look, there are glass cases here filled with all types of trilobites.
modern reef critters. From Alpena, Michigan, storm surge deposits. reefs. Where the fossils are is a changing exhibit hall. Just currently it's all about the trilobites and these fossils and to truly see what they're all about. It's very difficult to film, so you gotta come here and see it for yourself. The trip to Cranbrook is well worth it. Outside the museum building, that's the uh, planetarium. And as I said before, this around the corner here used to be the main entrance, right by the fountain. Just go up those steps. And that was the main entrance of past. And just inside there to your right, you can see it is the planetarium. All right, that's a quick look at the Cranbrook Institute of Science. This is the uh, pond out front that used to have carp, but I don't see any carp in it now, but it still has that fountain. I hope you enjoyed the visit here. I thank you for coming along on another guest adventure where everyone is a guest, including me. I'd ask again that you subscribe to the channel. And if you like the video, please indicate by hitting that like button. And also hit that bell icon so you don't miss an upload. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you on the next video.